Welcome to Dominate the Nation. I'm one of your co-hosts, Maxine Dugan. I'm in San Francisco, California. Hello, I am Domina L. I'm in Denver, Colorado. Awesome, Al. What are we going to talk about today? I know that um, we've got so much to chit chat about. Uh, we're having the uh, International um, Horrors uh, Day, June second. That will be um, celebrated by doing a protest over there at um, the, um, the the San Francisco Civic Center, where Cluster Fest, which is a comedy week weekend long comedy show, is going to be featuring. Amy Schumer. And so we're going to go protest Amy and try to educate Amy on, you know, what's wrong with her um, bad humor and her bad politics. So um, that's what we're going to be doing from four to six uh, at the San Francisco Civic Center. And everybody's welcome to come in um, and join us while we educate the audience. So I've already had one um, you know, a piece of media, you know, who reached out and so uh, to, you know, try to get people to uh, understand what our issues are, because I think people are really interested, Al, to hear about um, these comedians and how they use us as um, punchlines in their jokes, and then they turn around and lobby Congress to pass all these laws that make us more marginalized and uh, force us into the underground where we don't have access to equal protection under the law. And um, so people are really interested to hear about that. Yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah, it's pretty shocking. You know, I was uh, looking at some of her past media and, um, you know, and then there she is with the I Am Jane Doe production promoting uh, the SESTA legislation. And yeah, she just needs to get a clue, man. And it, it's not okay. Well, it's not okay, and so, you know, hopefully we can uh, try to get some visibility because, um, you know, certainly these celebrities have a ton of visibility that they uh, use to be able to pass these bad laws and um, that hurt our community, and then they turn around and act like, who, me? What did I do? Well, you know, they can't claim innocent. They can't claim that they didn't know uh, what they were supporting because clearly, you know, all these bad laws have impacted us negatively. We've been talking about it for almost 20 years now, right? So, uh, you know, the fact that they're not listening to us, they don't consult us when, you know, these bad laws come up. I mean, it just shows their complete irresponsibility and their, their ignorance. So. <laughs> it gets me when they... Uh, the people who support this bad legislation, they, you know, when we speak up, they try to say that we're trying to silence them and they have been dominating these, these uh, narratives and platforms this entire time and, and truly silencing our community. So it's, that's a pretty sleazy tactic, but you know, that's the kind of stuff that we're dealing with. So I'm really glad to hear that, you know, there are uh, people in the media who want to, you know, hear what we have to say about it. Yeah. I mean, I think especially now we've got people like, you know, Roseanne Barr, you know, making racist tweets. She's getting kicked off her TV show, you know, off the network there. Um, you know, that the networks need to be looking at some of these other um, actors and actresses and comedians like, you know, Amy Schumer. Um, you know, who is supporting, you know, these bad laws under the guise of rescuing sex trafficking victims when you and I and most everybody else knows clearly, L, that these are really racist laws at their core. They have a long history connected to white supremacy, promoted and invented by white supremacists, women suffragists at the turn of the century uh, for the same reasons, you know, that they want to promote their ideal of sexual purity and what sex looks like between adults, um, always by conflating us with children and infantizing us. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we um, call them out and tell them just to stop, that they need to, um, you know, that their immature approach uh, to talking about our industry is, is unacceptable mm -hmm. and that they need to uh, make some reparations to our community because it causes severe, serious, uh, severe damage to our community. And, um, 
you know, it violates our human rights, our civil rights, and our labor rights. Real life consequences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so also, you know, I know in Oakland they're having their, um, you know, their event on uh, June 2nd. And so uh, they've invited, you know, Kat Brooks to come speak. And so, you know, she's somebody who has, uh, you know, um, you know, I mean, I wrote about it in my blog, you know, at thisoldwhorehouse.com, you know, trying to break it down for people what's wrong with, um, you know, this whole, you know, sex trafficking narrative. And, um, you know, I went back and I listened again to the interview that she did on KPFA that we linked on the blog. And, you know, she's talking about doing art with the babies, you know. She was asking me that question, Maxine, you know, what do we do about, you know, you know, how can we protect the babies and regulate sites like Backpage and give sex worker rights, you know, where she's, you know, balling these big issues all up into one, you know, like there's going to be this magic, you know, antidote, like, um, she's a magical thinker, definitely. She's a magical thinker. (laughs) But anyway, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no. No, I think it's, you know, like Dr. Lois Lee said, you know, that they're just, um, you know, people like her and like Holly Joshi from Missy are just way off the mark, you know, and, um, you know, but I think I exposed, you know, in the blog that, um, you know, they, they clearly, you know, are using these old racist white supremacist narratives and that they shouldn't be getting any space in the sex worker rights movement at all. You know, it's a shame that our sex worker rights movement does not have any critical thinking when it comes to um, picking, you know, who it is that they associate with. And, um, you know, it's part of the reason why we don't have decrim today, why we don't have any actual rights, why we're on this continuum of losing our rights and losing access to our free speech. So, um, you know, it's really time for our community to step up and get some critical thinking. There's a long you know, institutional memory here. There's a long history of sex worker rights here that uh, people who want to participate should avail themselves to and figure out, you know, what's the best way to go about it. Yeah, political savvy. You know, things are, you know, it's the wheel doesn't need to be reinvented. You know, the system works the way it works. And, you know, there are mechanisms and actions that, you know, are pretty much set in stone. We have to engage the mechanism and figure out how to do that and do it clever and and stop handing our talking points over to the opposition and platforming the opposition. You know, when I was watching, uh, re-watching that Democracy Now! uh, you know, video with Kat Brooks, you know, she was definitely using the Celeste Guap uh, police, you know, the case with all the police having over, you know, something like 30 police having sex with her four when she was underage and the rest after her, after she turned 18, um, you know, she used that to platform her org, the uh, against police terror uh, organization that she has. And hey, I'm, I'm totally on board with with police accountability and, and taking a stand against the police abuses. But when she, you know, was asked the question, you know, what her asks were, um, she had nothing to say about decriminalization, nothing that would actually benefit the sex worker community or the victims uh, that she's, you know, thinking, you know, are there. And, um, you know, it just, you know, she, she doesn't really seem to understand our issues at all. And then at the same time, she is spewing this white supremacist rooted uh, anti-trafficking rhetoric, which is, you know, just like, wow, are you kidding me? You're propping up the prison industrial complex and claim that you are, you know, fighting against it. How does that happen? I mean, that's just, you know, she just doesn't get it. She doesn't understand our issues. And to be speaking at this event, um, I mean, it's just really, I got to question why. I mean, you know, she's not, she's not hearing us. She's not really hearing us. She's, she's not an ally. She doesn't get it. No, and she shouldn't be speaking publicly at this event, at a sex worker event for International um, Horse Day. 
You know, it's a problem that um, not only does she not get it, you know, that she's busy pitting, you know, sex worker rights against, you know, the babies that she's doing art with. And, you know, um, she just, you know, the sex worker rights who brought her, the sex workers who brought her into this event don't understand, you know, the position that we hold in this life. And it makes me question, like, are they actual workers in the sex industry? I mean, how does it escape them that, um, you know, if you want to hear what somebody like Kat Brooks who's put herself out there as, you know, running for mayor, then, you know, you do it in the context of having a political club. There's tons of political clubs here who host those types of candidates where you get to come in and you get to give your spiel. Most of those political clubs, um, you know, they have a bunch of institutional memory, let me tell you that, and they uh, have questionnaires. And they ask those candidates, do you support sex worker rights? Do you support decriminalization? And, you know, people in the club get to ask those candidates those questions and those follow-up questions that hold them accountable and get them on record, get them in writing. You don't invite, you know, people whose position is already uh, publicly associated with white supremacists to your sex worker event where you just lost a whole bunch of rights. You just lost a whole bunch of free speech and you're going to give somebody else a platform for their free speech? who's associated with white supremacists, their narrative is clearly associated with white supremacists. I mean, it's unbelievable to me that the, um, the level, the lack of uh, critical thinking, um, you know, that the sex worker nation, you know, doesn't have uh, around, um, you know, what's going on around them. I mean, it just seems to me, and I don't know about you, Elle, but it seems that people are in our community are just starting to figure out all these anti-laws are, you know, really about targeting us. I mean, it may have been something that people have said between ourselves, but to see finally, you know, a bunch of people, you know, in our, in our, who say they're in our industry, finally make that statement. Finally, it's 2018. <laughs> you know, we, we've been saying it for, you know, well over a decade and nobody has listened. They're all too afraid of, you know, being, you know, uh, sex trafficking, you know, apologists, you know, they're all too busy apologizing for, you know, they've never met a, a forced, uh, somebody in forced labor in our industry, but yet they're tripping over themselves to, right. you know, use that survivor word, you know, and that survivor word L comes out of the history. Let me give you that out of history lesson. That survivor word comes out of the antis here in San Francisco. It was put forward by, um, she's now dead. Thank God. Um, Norma Hotelling, who ran the first ant the first uh, diversion program out of the San Francisco District Attorney's Office in 1994, people would be arrested for prostitution, and you'd have to go sit in this day long, you know, Saturday, you know, class where you're sexually shamed, you know, shown all the pictures of the STDs, and you have a bunch of um, sexual assault victims come in and tell tell you stories about how they're sexually assaulted, and that's why they worked as a prostitute. Right. You know, all that. And so, you know, she really put forward that whole survivor and survivorship language, used it to fundraise on, use it to garner uh, more support in the public sphere to continue the criminalization of prostitution, profited off the criminalization of our labor. You know, the, the sex worker rights movement should not be using that word. No. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Oh, and, and asking them permission, you know, let us survive. I mean, are you kidding me? I don't need their permission. They need to get out of the way. You know, they're not in any position to be, you know, deciding whether I can survive or they can survive or not. You know, we need to acknowledge that they are wrong to be doing everything they're doing. And we have liberty interests to be engaging in erotic services. And that's the platform. That's the platform. And, and you know, the, the sex work apologist route has been going on for so long, put forth by, you know, people such as Carol Lee and others. And, you know, it, it hasn't worked. It's done a lot of damage, in fact. It pits groups against each other, all of which who are criminalized and marginalized and not in any privileged position. 
And, um, you know, it's just, wow, you know, uh, can we learn from this and move forward and stand firmly on the principle that regardless of why we do erotic services, we have the right to do it. Yeah. I mean, there was an op-ed, you know, in the um, San Diego press and, um, you know, I mean, it, you know, we just don't need to tell people, you know, to give people the ammunition about why we work. I mean, we're not asking them why, you know, they work. We don't care why they work. You know, in the labor movement, you know, why people work is not an issue. It's a non-issue. It's a non-starter. You know, you want to you wanna get rights, you want to have your sex work as work, then treat it like it's worth it, work and said, instead of being so caught up in some, you know, intersectional magical thinking that you have to apologize for, you know, invisible people that you've never met. Yeah, and, and our rights are not and shouldn't be considered contingent upon the rights of any other group. You know, we deserve our rights, regardless of what's going on in anywhere. You know, it, it's just a fact. And, and it's another uh, flaw in those narratives that, you know, they keep pushing. And it's something that, you know, I really wish our community would, would get skills around, you know, how to put forth, you know, good campaigns. I mean, we see in Swanee Hunt's, you know, uh, 377 page um, social engineering campaign, the 10 year action plan that she put forth in uh, 2010, how important it was to, down to the very details of what words to say and not to say. And, you know, it's just good old fashioned public relations propaganda. And we have our own community pushing the propaganda of the opposition. I you know, know. mind modeling. Mm -hmm. And and like with the Me Too thing and the the survive survivor thing, um, you know, these are perfect examples of bad strategy. And we are also seeing uh, almost instant karma that the opposition, there have been several articles, the one with Melissa Farley's talking about, oh yes, sex workers should be in Me Too because their work is inherently evil and, and violent and, and rapey. And um, then the more recent thing uh, with the word survivors in the one art, another article, I'll put this stuff below, um, where they, they ripped apart our community's strategy and talking point. They just shredded it. And I saw that coming. It's like, you guys, you guys, you need to learn. We need to learn that this is not good strategy. And to use words, talking points, and strategy that cannot be easily co-opted, that will be solid punch, you know, solid packing a punch. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it stems from, to me, the criminalization of the association and, you know, people not being able to come together and have face-to-face relationships, not being able to have face-to-face -face conversations, and, you know, people, you know, the Twitter fight this morning, you know, on, you know, one worker said, you know, she, you know, didn't want to give a reference to another worker because they, um, you know, they have such low prices. Why would she give a, a perfectly respectful, you know, well-paying customer, you know, over to another provider who's notorious for, <laughs> charging less money, <laughs> you know, and people were like, well, you know, you, you know, re refusing a, um, what was it? Refusing a, um, you know, reference, you know, that impacts her survival and that's a bad thing, you know, and you shouldn't do that. It's like, wait a minute, you know, you want to support people's rights to be able to have their own prices, even if they're low, you know, that's that worker's decision but yet you don't want to support another worker who, you know, doesn't want to see the race to the bottom for her industry. Mm, right. <laughs> you know, it's like, we should you protect know, our which industry. side are you on? Because you're mm. not even, you know, you're, you're not even clear about what it is you're talking about. And that's some of the problems with our industry, you know, people in our industry overall is that, uh, you know, they don't have face-to-face -face relationships. They don't have the consequences of having a real relationship. You know, you can yeah. sit on Twitter and talk your hypocrisy just like the antis can, apparently. And something that you said the other day when we were talking privately, um, 
was about we should be able to have conversations, you know, in real relationships that you're investing in, you can bring up uncomfortable things and have these conversations um, that where you don't exactly agree or it might be controversial without having to, you know, be blocked or shut off or excluded or shadow banned. I mean, that's so immature, you know, mature adults can have conflict and, and be able to process and work through issues. And, you know, it's, it's like, there's this herd mentality that if you, you know, you got to go along with, with certain blanket narratives. And if you don't, well, then you're not in the club. I mean, just weird, weird, immature, unsophisticated behaviors. And that's not going to work either. Yeah. And I think the operative word there, L, is commitment. You know, people have to have commitment, um, you know, beyond their, you know, their own, uh, you know, personal lives. You know, if you don't have the ability, the commitment to come together with others um, to work for the larger common good of getting some decriminalization and getting some actual rights, okay, then you're up for yourself. Fine, just say that. Just say that so, you know. I can block you, <laughs> you know, just because I don't want to, I don't want to see the garbage, you know, I just, there's just too much garbage already out there, I think, and it just comes to me from our community being so oppressed and um, criminalized in our right to associate that, um, you know, people haven't really take, you know, they don't take seriously our relationships between each other and, you know, value them as such. And, um, you know, acknowledge that, you know, we have to have this common goal here, you know, that the name calling is, you know, unless you're doing something really egregious, <laughs> you know, it's just not warranted. <laughs> you got to be doing something really stupid to, you know, you know, like lowballing clients. <laughs> That's really stupid. <laughs> yeah. Lowering standards. Not a good thing, you know. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I believe we are accountable to each other, you know, in the industry. We're together building something or we're together tearing it down, um, you know, and, and I think it's good to raise the standards and to maintain those standards and want to have standards. <laughs> right. Right. So, yeah. So, you know, we, we've got the, um, the Summer Institute for Union Women coming up. Uh, here that's going to be held at Sonoma State in Northern California I'm on so June 10th and 14th. So um, I'll see you there and um, we can be video vlogging about other things and um, you know how the protests go this weekend. And um, yeah, that's it for me. Uh, I hope everybody likes, shares, and subscribes to our channel.